Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, we gon' talk, we gon' have fun. We be on fire, we be lit lit. It's a unique hustle, big, big. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? No, no, Nina Madel, well, go on. I want y'all to stop what you're doing right now. Go like, subscribe, follow us on all social media platforms. What I mean, all I mean, all I mean are Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat, you name it, we're on it. Just Google us, Boss Talk Podcast 101. We pop up first in line, I guarantee you. But if you want to see our exclusive stuff, you got to go over to our YouTube channel and join our membership. Let me tell you, we have stuff in the membership that everybody wants to see, but only members, members only, as you say. And all you can be a part of our membership is under each and every video, including this one right here in the description section, there's a link that says join our membership. Click that link and you will be so grateful and so thankful because let me tell you, that content over there is fire. Thank you for all the support. Man, check it, man. Hey, man, we down here in New Orleans, man. And you know, we couldn't come down here without stopping through and hollering at my boy YD the illish man, one of the coldest little young niggas coming up. I can't even go down the street, walk the city without niggas hollering, hey, man, you YD, he, he the one, he, he the hot one in the city right now. So we got the hot one in the city. Hey, what's up, bro? Man, what's it's up? good to have you, man. Nah, thank you for having me, bro. Man, I already know, man, we gonna get all the way into the music man but always Mr. Jamaica always get into your background just a little bit we want to know about we want to know about Ninth Ward uh, we, we want to know about a lot of stuff you know what I'm saying so let's get to it so what part of um, New Orleans are you born and raised uh, I'm from the, I'm from the Ninth Ward the Florida project area mm -hmm. uh, Congress Street shit is um, Ninth Ward split up in like two different two different ways they got two bridges that separated Okay. Like they got the Desire area, they got the Florida area, and they got Cross Canal area. And I'm what from, area are you? I'm from the Florida Project. Florida Project. The Florida area. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What make your project different from all the other projects in the Night Ward? Uh, we just got our own everything. Like our own sound, our own everything, our own swag, our own demeanor. We just march when we step for real. So it's different. The swag, everything is different. Yeah, everything different. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Are you an only child? Nah, nah. How many out? I, I got two little brothers on my mama's side. I'm the oldest boy. I got two little brothers and I got an older sister. And on my daddy's side, I got two big sisters and a big brother. I'm the youngest on this side. Okay, okay. So your mom and dad are not together? Nah, nah. Okay, um, growing up, were they together then? Nah, my dad went to jail when I was two. When you was two? Yeah. For how long? For 10 years. He came home when I was 12. How did that affect you? Did you ever, did she ever take you to go visit him in prison? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I went and seen him and stuff. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It affected me because I, I be just feeling like a lot of stuff I missed out on. Like, like so you said it affected you because I always wonder, because I hear a lot of people who go to prison and have kids out and they're always talking about how they felt being in prison, but you as a child growing up and have to go back and forth. How did you feel going to the prison, um, having to see your dad behind bars, um, knowing that he's not there for you, and could he really like parent you from behind bars? Yeah, um, it took me a while to understand it, like to just just cope with it, like you know what I'm saying, like and understand everybody make mistakes for real. Like his best thinking at that age got him where he was. You feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I ain't really hold it against him, like you know what I'm saying. Like I'm probably one of the only one of his children, like they ain't really hold it against really? me. Really? You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, for real. For Not real. even in the beginning and then you eventually warmed yourself up to it? Nah, nah, I ain't really that's hold dope. it against him because people made mistakes. Like, yeah, I, that's the, I went perfect. But, that's dope that you were able to understand that as a, at a young age, though. Yeah, yeah for sure. Because I'm, I'm the oldest boy, so I'm really outside. Like, mm -hmm. I ain't about to let my sister. You know what I'm saying? Come up short of damn sure not my little brothers either. So it's like anything to sacrifice, I gotta take that for sure. And did your dad tell you that, you know what, you the man now, so while I'm gone, you gotta take care of business and stuff like that? Or you just nah, took it, it upon was, yourself? It was pretty much like that was understood. Like he was okay. shocked by it. Like when he, you know what I'm saying, got the new man shit, he was just like, like he proud of me. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And since your um mom and dad wasn't together, because he'd been gone. Um, did she have any other male influences, like any other relationships yeah, growing up? She was married to my, oh, uh, my little brother's dad. Oh, okay. Yeah, so she was married. But it was always like I taught myself everything. I had my uncles and stuff too. Like That was really like my father figures. Like, cause I wasn't home. I was oh, okay. never home. Even at a young age, you never st you, you was never you know, you was in the streets? I wasn't no inside. Really? Yeah, and your mama couldn't keep you inside? She tried, but it wasn't really too much she could do. Cause I always say that, cause being a parent, you know, especially with boys, that's why I always tell, you know, especially single parents, I'm like, 
no matter how much we try as mothers, you cannot be a father to that boy child. Yeah, for sure you, you can't. You know? For sure you can't. Because some of these moms be like, oh, I'm hood, I'm this, I'm that. So, you know, they feel like that's you. Go ahead. They feel like they can do that. You know what I mean? And some boys say that, yeah, my mom was mom and dad to me, but not all the time. No, nah, she couldn't. She tried, though, like. Because she couldn't keep you out of trouble. No, nah, I always was in trouble. I <laughs> run from school to whatever. Like, mom was putting up, but she tried, like. You know what I'm saying? Like she tried to just give us the best she could, like, you know what I'm saying? But by me being the oldest boy, like you can't keep me blind to nothing because I know what's going on. Like, At that age, did you believe in God? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I got baptized like when I was in like fourth grade. Really? Yeah. And you understood what all that, because- I ain't gonna say I fully understood. Yeah, because you know how kids, you know, your parents be like, well, this is what you're supposed to do, but then kids just do it just to make other people happy, but not really understand the depth of really what that meant. Yeah, I was one of them. Like, I didn't really understood what it meant. Like, I grew up off with my family believed, like, right. believe in baptism. And this year I took my shahada. Like, yeah. So it's just like, you know, I'm just learning as I go, bro. Yeah, but that's good that you believed in God and stuff because especially being in the streets, you know, we all going to be making mistakes doing, you know, going down the wrong path. But as long as you have him in the corner, you know that, well, you know what, he going to save you when you, how many times you find yourself in situations where you're like, man, I don't know how I got out of that, but only so, because of God. Yeah, yeah, that's real. Like, I I think with me, it's just like, like I understand, like, I ain't smarter than the devil. You know what I'm mm -hmm. So the more you go up, you gonna, you gonna run into something that try to put you back the way you came from. Like you can't out thank the devil. The tell one. me about, hold on. Tell me about one situation that you've been through that you can talk about, you know, where you felt like God pulled you out of that and he saved your life. A lot, I can speak on a lot. Um, Michelle, um, probably just being in jail and I try to just control the situation myself and it wasn't working, it just like, the moment I just be like, man, I'm just leave it all in God's hand, pray it, and you know what I'm saying? He do it on his own, and he did it. How old were you when you were in jail? Probably like 17, 18, just turned 18. So you were an adult? Yeah, I was an adult, yeah. How long were you in jail for? 13 months. Okay. Yeah. Wow, you know, one thing about it, man, is a scripture to say I was in prison and you didn't visit me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, you know, at the end of the day, a lot of people that really be linking with God a lot of times, you know, you got to understand it, go through that prison mechanism. You know what I'm saying? So everybody got to understand wherever you at, he can get to you. So you say the devil is smart, but God, greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. So I already know I'm one. I, the battle already won. You know what I'm saying? But just, you know, I'm going to get into what your demographics is, man. Uh, Ninth Ward, man. Is that the biggest ward? Yeah, yeah, that's the biggest ward. They consider the East. East of New Orleans and Nine Wall, but people don't really. Is it the, is is the East? It is, it, it is. is. But people just say they're from the East. Yeah, but is the East? But if you take the East away from the Ninth Ward, is it still the biggest ward? Yeah, for sure. You think so? Still? Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm for just sure. I'm just asking because you know at the end of the day, there's a lot of things. I'm from the Ninth Ward. I don't mind dying. What is that all about? It's just like man, like holding it down for my that's people. Because that's y'all. That's y'all's. It's just like that's a people, slogan when people come from out here like uh, what they call it terrorists they yeah don't mind dying for their people like they come over here for that like you know what i'm saying however they go it's just what it is i'm out the night wall and we don't mind that's standing up for each other how long you been hearing that shit since i was born like since i could know what i can hear and understand i know that's what it is i'm from the nine i don't mind dying like that's well, what's going on you sampled some music. Uh, you sampled that Big Mike. Yeah. Like, like, what made you sample that line from Big Mike's? Uh, you know what I mean? Uh, really, Jeter. Jeter just called me. He was like, "Man, I want you to lock in on this person." And he was he saw me Big Mike, and I ain't really like never heard nobody around that era. By me, I'm 25, bro. Like, I ain't never hit nobody around that era. Really, was holding down for the night wall. You feel what I'm saying? Like, really going all in for us music wise. From you know, so I was like, "Man, this gotta go on something like." This gotta go on. And he called me like, hey, bro, like, if you don't do nothing I ever told you, do this one for me, bro. Like, I'm like, man, it's a go. You know what I'm saying? So wow. I went in there and knocked it out. Wow. Shout out to Big Mike, bro. Yeah, yeah. Big Mike, man. Like I said, he ain't been on Boss Talk yet, but uh, we done, I know he, he 
he we rock with him a lot because he it's a Texas Louisiana thing, you know. Yeah. And for me, you know, when it comes to Pimp C and all of the different people, Pimp C being one that really originally from Louisiana, but he rep Texas with all his heart, you know what I mean? Port Arthur. So when you look at the tides, me being five miles, six miles from Louisiana, uh, but going to Shreveport and coming back into Texas, hustling, doing whatever I was doing, you know, it's always been a thing where Louisiana and Texas. Uh, even P Neal when they first got in the game, you know what I'm saying? Lincoln with UGK and just, it's a whole history. That's a litany of things. Anybody in Texas that you would collab with? Shit, I'm ready to work, bro. Like if somebody serious about what they doing, they own what they own, I'm ready to work. I like I like to hear you and Big X to plug or something on something together. Yeah, for sure. That would be a hard lick. Or like I said, you got you got the Hispanic dudes, little D baby, and and, and and you got Mexican O T, them the younger ones, you know what I'm saying? But you got uh we got some young nigga named Montana seven hundred, you have to look them up. Yeah, I've been I've been all and, the names and, you can and, and and What's the other little nigga named Zillionaire Doe? I ain't hear him. Yeah, check him out. They 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 they, they, sure. they on they they like you, they coming. So I think you guys are, are next up, you know, when it comes down to pushing the culture. You know what I'm saying? So I really be watching, you know, shout out to my boy Gutter TV and, uh, you know, different people that keep me, you know, like grounded into these young dudes just coming, you know, that's going to be coming up next. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, man, thank you, man. I, you on Boss Talk 101 now. I'm a, I love the music, so you're going to hear me. I'm going to reflect different things. Wife, you gonna, she going to hit you with a few things as well, Mr. Jamaica. You got something for it? Who is Merle Alfrey and Elo? Because yeah, I know you have them tattooed on your leg. How important were they to you? Shit, I, it, it ain't no me without them. Like That was my father figures. That's my uncles. Those are your uncles, yeah. the ones you were talking about earlier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's who just like showed me everything. Like They ain't try to put me in the streets. They try to keep us away, but they ain't blind. They try to hide, hide the world from us. Like You know what I'm saying? Like They always let me know if you do this, this the consequences. Like You know what I'm saying? I've been through this. I've done this. Like. It's one of the ones that pulled them. Like, you know what I'm saying? I miss them to death. Mm. Bro, I wouldn't be no me. I wouldn't be no why. I wouldn't be ill without them. You know what I'm mm. saying? If it wasn't for them. They passed on? Yeah. How long ago? It was about seven, eight years. Mm. Going on probably like five. Going on five, going on four. Wow. On four years. Wow. Rest in peace. I went, you know, I, I come down here because Birdman and them pulled up and we did that street, you know, named after them. And, uh, the, the William brother, him and Slim was here and it'd been a dope week. We, we come down here to show love, you know what I'm saying? And I heard about a story where you end up going down to Miami yeah. and rocking out with Birdman and them. Just how did that even happen? And, and what was the, you know, what was the driving factor? And how did you like it? Uh, it was a pretty cool experience. That was my first time ever in Miami too. Uh, we went out there, we was just locked in in the studio. G that took me out there with him, you know what I mean? was really, um, he wanted G to come pull up on him and see, you know, what a G to had an ear for. Like he's looking at G to like G to the A and R, because G to like one of the ones for real. Yeah, yeah. So it was like we went up in there, we in the studio, politics, and he just pulled up. Yeah, fun. But basically, I'm in there like I ain't the one that's like, you know, they always got that one that you gonna hear about and you gonna know like, all right, damn, dudes right here by me on that. Like you know what I'm saying, like. Like if you a street nigga, you was hustling, you gonna be like, man, the nigga right here got a half a million, that quiet one, like I won't, I'm that one. Like, I ain't about to be in there popping it and let you know, like it's gonna speak for when I do it, when I do it, you feel what I'm saying? So I'm in there really just stealing advice for real. Wow, when it come you down to saying? cash money and the movement and how it affected you as a as a young boy coming up, what do you remember about that movement and just be, seeing Birdman, seeing Juvie, seeing B Jizzle and all of them boys. I know they're a little, lot older than you, but how was it just seeing that movement when you took notice of it? Shit, I was, um, man, I was probably like four, five years old. We wanted to be hot boys. We used to call ourselves hot boys. Like, that's just what it was. You weren't a hot boy, you ain't on shit. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Young, so I respect what they got going on. Shout out to all them too, like, dog, like, some real stand up guys. I met G BG personally, like, talk to him on the regular, like, real stand up person, bro. Like, we got a song too. We got a song we're gonna release. I won't release it probably like around the end of the year. You and BG, how was that? Like, you met him when he came home. Yeah, so, you met the new home. BG. The old yeah. BG 13 years before was a totally different BG. Yeah, the yeah. evolution of B Jizzle. Yeah. You, you met the Jizzle, the real, you know what I'm saying, what God has formed. Yeah, so you like know what I'm saying. Going up to him on the bim, and then he come home like you know, like you know, like prison just teach you a lot. So he in a different state of mind, but he know like you know what I'm saying. So he just came home, and I'm telling him like, man, this felt like a real dream. Like yeah, it, yeah, it feel real. Yeah, it feel real. Cause like, nigga, I was five years old. I, 
and the entire round, you know what I'm saying? Mama on my head, popping me, and I'm I'm on any type of time. So and you went to, around my head and shit. You went to the studio or y'all just through? Nah, nah. Y'all uh, just uh, sent it each yeah, other? Yeah, we sent it through. Too. Yeah, because he been going through it because of all the stuff he's yeah. been facing trying to, but I heard the, the, the cloud has been lifted up off of him now, so he's able yeah. to do a few more things. I just was with him the other day, yeah. well, well, a few days ago, and, and it looked like them boys in the right spot space you know, they're going to be out there tonight performing, so that's going to be huge, you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. But it's like, man, like you, you you know, Big Buff, man, you you did a whole song, uh, uh, you know, showing them love. You know, what was that about? Let's talk about it. Oh, shit, that's on. So it's just like, man, I was growing up just hearing this voice on the phone, like, you know what I'm saying? We always chop it up, keep me level-headed, just growing up what I was going through. I try not to, like, scratch it too much of what's going on out here by him being where he was, you feel what I'm saying? But yeah. Let them know where my head at out here, you feel what I'm saying? But like I said, your best thing can get you in certain positions, you know what I'm saying? So I always try to stay level here with him, Brandon. I love him, you know what I'm saying? Because he's going to keep it real with me. Like, who who did you look up to? Like, like what, when it, on the rap game, you know, like he was he was incarcerated. So he was, your whole life, you just heard stories about Buff, right? Yeah, yeah. You you never did go to the prison with him. Yeah, yeah. You we, went I, down I, there? Yeah, 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 for sure. Seeing pictures? And stuff and all that, yeah, yeah. That, that's sure. hard. So you grew up yeah. just really going back and forth to that prison yeah, system. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Wow, wow. Like, but what artists, like what what artists that you looked up to really that you were like, man, you know, I see I I see it through him, I could make this happen. Uh really, really like it'll be a low smart I watch from local to go up like a ride wave, uh, Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? Like the Chief Keith and the, the G Herbo. That's hard. And then I go back to the Jada kisses and, uh, and currency too, like you know yeah, what I'm curse, shout like, out to currency, yeah, shout out to Spitter man, the whole jet life and what they got going on too. Like I, I was, I was one of them. I, I'm a student of the game, bro. Like forever. For wow, you ended up performing with uh, uh, with Rod Four Nine, didn't you? Yeah, y'all, you, you what? What you y'all at? I was Smoothie King. Smoothie King. How did you put that together? How did y'all come together like that? Uh, shit, Rod just hit me up one day and was like, hey, bro, you want to be part of the vulture? I'm gonna throw it in Wu. It was like four months prior. To him, you know, to the month, to June. So yeah. He was just like, hit me up and let me know. I'm like, yeah, for sure. I, I, I won't be a part of that. So and, just and, and it down. went down through there. Yeah, it just went down. And I heard you shut it down, though. You yeah. weren't playing no games. Yeah, it was lit. Yeah, that was, that was a pretty cool experience, man. Appreciate it. For, I, yeah, for yeah, that. yeah. I, I was like, man, like this little young nigga always, but how was the energy in the crowd? What was going on in your mind when you were performing? Like, man, it's only up. Like, it's only up. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, if it was a good feeling, it was a feeling like I ain't never felt before. Like that was the first show I ever was nervous about. Like, like man, I wonder if they gonna sing this back to me. You feel what I'm saying? Like, so yeah, yeah. Hearing like nine, ten thousand people scream my song back was was major to me, bro. Like, no, and that's that's the that's the cold part about it. I got a question. So one thing I've always noticed how New Orleans, as much as it's in the state of Louisiana, it's like its own island. It's almost like it's not even in Louisiana. Should the whole state of Louisiana embrace New Orleans and their artists and stuff like that? Why don't they? Uh, I can't explain it. I don't know. It's just like New Orleans really like, like, bro, they got people who from here, bro, that forget they from Louisiana. Right. Like, you go out of town, they be like, you from Louisiana? They be like, <laughs> you just reminded me of that. Cause New Orleans is so small and we in our own world, bro. And it's just like, everybody got the same mission to where they forget about everything else. But me, I'm trying to be on like, man, I want to lock in with everything in Louisiana, whatever they got going. Like when I leave him, I'm about to go to uh, Lafayette and do some shit out there and work out there. I'll be trying to stay tapped in, bro. Like everywhere, cause I know how it is. Like being blocked, like from everything. New Orleans is just this big. Like, you feel what I'm saying? They got a world full of people ready to love you. You know what I'm saying? So. I think one day it's gonna come together, bro. Do you? And then, sorry, but then your accent, you know how, I think that's another reason why New Orleans is so bites up because New Orleans, even people from here, the accent is different from just a Louisiana accent. You know what sure. I mean? So it's like y'all stand out and stand out from everybody else. Mm -hmm. So um, doing collabs, do you wanna do collabs with other people in Louisiana? Definitely. Like Definitely. who do you see coming up in Louisiana that you'd be like, man, I would love to do a collab with them? Uh, Green Eyes. Uh, I didn't met a couple artists from around. Um, Wap Beasy from BR. Mm -hmm. I, I just be trying to stay tapped in. Like if somebody run across my face and I know they ain't from out here and I feel what you got going on, mm -hmm. I could it could be one song and I just heard it. You ain't got it. Don't matter where you from. I'm trying to do something. Like, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Like for 
forever. You have my music with Money Bag Yo or, or YT, y, YTB Fat? Yeah, I did some stuff with Fat. Okay. I did a few songs with Fat. How did you make that happen? Uh, my brother really reached out to his camp and he was just, you know, tapped in with me and was like, fuck, he fucking what I got going on. He came out here. So I really rolled out the red carpet for him out here. Like, let him know, like, this me out here. Like, for real, I got this shit going on. Because everybody fuck with me, bro. My name ain't bad out here. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So I just was like, I tapped into him, like, in his story and what he got going on. He came up similar how I came up. So it was just like, you know, let me finally go reach out and do it and get some some features from elsewhere. Like, you know what I'm saying? So he came out here and we just been locked in since since then we've been locked in. Why do everybody in Louis in New Orleans love you so much? As like, cause even when we interviewed Kid Kid, um, and we were asking him, you know, tell us about some up and coming, you know, artists who are like, you know, so loved and growing. And he named you as well. So it's like, why do everybody love you in New Orleans so much? I don't know. I just ain't scared to say what people be scared to say, but I feel like I guess that that's just my superpower. Like the, the good and the bad. However, I, I'm gonna come as I come. I ain't mm -hmm. trying to pertain no image. I'm not trying to go. I am what I am. So I'm not about to try to go around no basketball player, act like I'm a point guard. You feel what I'm saying? I ain't about to go around no lawyer, act like I'm a lawyer. You feel what I'm saying? I'm me. So however I come, that's just how I come. And fuck, they just embrace me. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know though. I can't really tell you, bro. <laughs> nah, it be confusing me. Like, cause it be so many kids too. So I be right. like, what am I talking about that this five, six year old understand? Wow. Like, What's the youngest kid that came up to you and said they love your music? Shit, my son, for real. How old is your son? Two years old at the time. Like he, he love everything I do. He gonna wake up all his might. Like that's my daddy. That's what he got going on. This song, yeah, why, why? He gonna let you know. <laughs> right, he four nine. He about to make five this month on the twenty second, July twenty oh, second. Wow, that's a day before my birthday. Yeah, that's great. And mm -hmm. the day before that, that's when my uncle passed away. Wow, so it was like crazy because that's like the worst day of my life and the best. And the day best of my day of life. life. Yeah. I see you blinging, big dog. I yeah. mean, you you know you 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 went to Johnny Dane and got yeah. them things put yeah. in. Yeah, for sure. Like yeah. like, uh, how important was that to the whole brand, man? Uh, man, I ain't gonna lie. The makeup, baby, the setup. Yeah, they that, that got. They had to went. They had to go on, bro. I ain't gonna lie. Since I was small, we used to put the little silver gum wrap. <laughs> <right out. laughs> that that regular spirit, man. Yeah, that like, that little so look in the mirror, like man, this gotta come. <laughs> this shit gotta go on, like you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So when I got a chance to, I was just like, man, it's time. But I went to Souls before I went to Johnny. Okay, so okay. I, I wanted a different setting, so I just reached out to Johnny and just go tap in with him. Yeah, so spent some money with him. Yeah. You like rocking with Johnny Dane? Yeah, 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 bro. Smooth operation. How much did you pay that? No, don't. <laughs> no, no, I, don't I don't mind. Yeah, bro. how much you had to pay that boy for that grill? It's thirty six thousand, bro. Carry wow. cut flawless diamonds. Wow, yeah, thirty six thousand. Thirty six sure. grand. Yeah, for sure. Bop bop woo bop. Yeah. yeah. So what's <laughs> the next? What's the next set? You know, once you your game is elevating, you gonna be trying to get something new. What's the next set for you? I don't know. I'm. I'm Bro, I'm changing in my mind growing daily. Like, I ain't gonna lie to what, like, I don't like watches like that. Like, I'm into range. I want some range and stuff like range and some chains and stuff like that. Oh, okay. Earrings and stuff like that. We're gonna just turn it up as much as possible. I'm gonna make sure it's what I like. You know what I'm saying? Because you know, one thing that's, some artists do it and some artists don't. They always say that, you know, being an artist and coming up, you have to have that image and that look. So that's why everybody go out and buy the big chains, the watches, the rings, and stuff like that. But some artists be like, no, it's your, it's your lyrics. It doesn't always have to be all of these materialistic stuff is what you spilling out to your, you know, your listeners and stuff like that. How important do you think the image is to your career compared to, you know, a person that doesn't? Um, it's entertainment. So a motherfucker can't look at you and be bored. Like they gotta want what you got on. They gotta wonder what shoes you got on, where you get that from. They gotta wonder, they gotta want the bitch you want if you fucking with a motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? Like they gotta want that. They gotta want do what you do, be wrong what you want. They gotta want that. They gotta want sound like you. They gotta look at you and like, you know what I'm saying? So it just, everything gotta fit. The image is everything. But is that sending a wrong message to some of the kids though? Because with the kids, they'll be like, or people, I've heard people always say, well, that make them feel like materialistic stuff is what really matters. I can't say that because it's a rap business. You're not telling you to be a rapper. Mm -hmm. You feel what I'm saying? So if you're a lawyer 
you can't wear what a rapper got on. You gotta go get your tux. You gotta go invest, get you some tuxedos and stuff. You know what I'm saying? It's mm -hmm. your image. You can't walk in there with no gym shots on, trying to represent the motherfucker on a murder charge. You know what I'm right, saying? Right. It's your image. You gotta go get your little suit, five hundred dollar suit or something. Rent your suit. So with rapping, you gotta go get your little chain. Like mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Let you know when you see me, this is what I'm representing. You know what I'm saying? This is what's going on, and then tap into my music. Like wow. got it, Charlemagne. Yeah, you did the song. Yeah. What was that all about? Let's talk about that. Uh, I was in the studio and I just was going off the head. I rap off my chest, bro. Okay. And that particular day, I'm like, man, these niggas think they Charlemagne out here, bro. <laughs> they get everybody business, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, they got something to say about everything. Like, all right, y'all think y'all Charlemagne. You know what I'm saying? They just came on the song. I'm gonna wow. see how I feel. Wow, man. Yeah. So, so when you think about Charlemagne, you think he just be just jumping out the window? That's his job. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> So you can't be mad at him. That's his job, his entertainment. But some of you motherfuckers be on that. He ain't even getting paid for it. You know what I mean? <laughs> Thank you, Charlemagne. Yeah, oh, but that's although funny. that's his job, there's a lot of people who have the same job and still don't be outspoken like he is. No, nah, that's true too. You know what I mean? So it's good that he is as outspoken because that's rare to find that people nah, just talk sure. their mind no matter who's behind them. Nah, for sure. I ain't dissing him. I'm just saying like, the the man, man, if you not Charlemagne, don't yeah. try to be Charlemagne. You're right, you know right. Yeah, you ain't even got a mic in front of you. You yeah, just you ain't got him. nothing You just out here gaslighting nah, for, no, for nah. no reason. Yeah, they get on the phone in front of the phone and just say the <laughs> realest shit. You ever saw somebody like that, buddy? Just get on the phone, say the realest shit ever, and then put their phone in their pocket and do some female shit, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? So that's just what that was, that type of day. You, know you got another song, man, called Shadow Clock, right? Yeah. What What was it like? I seen that video. I, I really like the visuals on it. Like, man, you did your thing. Like, what was the inspiration behind that one? I don't know. It, it don't be that for me in the studio. I just rap, bro. I ain't gonna lie. So bro. you don't even do a treatment. You go out and do a video, you just rap. Yeah, yeah, I just rap. You don't ever have a concept behind it? Be like, you like, or do you have a team that's working with you to help you with that concept? Yeah, my brothers and my team, like, they help me with whatever. Like, if okay. they got an idea, then I'll be like, all right, bet, let's, let's do, it. do it. But I don't be on no scripted type of time. Like, I be want to go with the flow, because I feel like, bro, I won't be the, I won't be the first me. Yeah, you know, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm not trying to be the second Tupac or the second Big L, nothing. I won't be the first me. And what I liked about Tupac, he just went with the flow, bro. Like, Whatever came his way. It's Tupac. Like, this nigga here been here before. Like, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, so I just paid attention to how people be doing stuff. And it's, it's entertainment. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm a student. You know what I'm saying? I got to ask you, who is the hottest female artist in New Orleans right now, up and coming? They got a few of them, bro. I ain't lying. They got the Treaty. They got super bad they got tatiana they got a few females out here talking that talk bro they got i ain't lying new orleans got some of the hardest rappers bro really they just ain't no like nobody ain't because ain't i always hear about here. the males i don't be hearing about the females they as got much. the hardest females the hardest male rappers they out here bro like this is the place to come like i'm telling you the hardest some of the hardest verses ever in the world it ain't stop at Lil Wayne, bro mm. they got some more people you just gotta come out here. The people gotta come out here. They ain't got nothing out here. They don't have nowhere you can go turn in the record and bother these people for three, four months. They listen to it. They don't have that out here. We gotta fly. But why they gotta come out here? Why they? Can't, why the people, the the hot artists here can't you know get exposure international or global? They don't know, right, bro? Why they don't step out of the, this box and go out? Everybody don't know. Like I'm um, telling, like I'm um, like what we were just talking about. Like people out, they don't even know outside of New Orleans. So like, they just want to be popular they, here. They don't care about being popular everywhere else. New Orleans, all they know. I'm, I'm gonna say that New Orleans is all they know. I ain't gonna say that's what they want, but this all they know. Like, and I was a real victim of that. So what made you change your mind not to to step out of your box? I put it in my chest, like man, I want more. I gotta do what they ain't doing. I gotta go get on these flights. You know what I'm saying? I gotta hit that road. We beat the road up strictly for music. Like, whatever going on, we got this going on. We mm -hmm. gonna go where we gotta go for music. Everybody ain't with that. And what I do, I ain't scared to spend my money back on myself, bro. Like, I ain't waiting on no OG out the hood to come give me $1,500. I'm gonna do what I gotta do. This right. gonna be my last 1500 Look, I'm about to explain. Look, baby mom, it's going on. Just gotta do this. I gotta do this with my money. It's gonna come back. You feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Whatever, whatever situation I was on, I wasn't waiting on nobody. Everybody ain't got that out here. That's good. You feel what I'm saying? Wow. Uh, you got uh, Closer Than Most? Yeah, Closer Than Most. 
But you, you, I ain't even gonna ask you what inspired you. Just in the studio, like I'm gonna do this one now. No, I can say that song. That's that's one. That's my favorite song I made by myself. Bro. Really? Yeah. yeah. Why? Because I was just going through it, like the phase of just like transitioning from what I'm used to to what I'm about to get myself ready for. Like I wasn't at first. I wasn't understanding. Like they have, they they supposed to have. When you somebody, they supposed to have somebody hating on you. Like they supposed to have somebody trying to stop you from getting where you're going. They supposed to have people supporting you. They supposed to have people look up to you. I ain't understand that. Like, so what got me through that, I always just say to myself, like, man, I'm closer than most people. Like, you know what I'm saying? Reminding myself, like, I'm closer than most people where I'm from, for sure. You feel what I'm saying? So I just decided to make a record. Like, Is you know that the most impactful verse in that whole song to you? Yeah. How does it get, go? Yeah, I was about to yeah, ask you. We couldn't you. make you give us something. How, how it goes? Yeah. 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 Say, say that I'm selfish, I'll probably be. Cause where I'm from, it ain't no money, no love. <laughs> like, yeah, I'll come on that straight on that type of time. Like, it's one of the ones I want you to go check it out, bro. Man, yeah, yeah, go check it out. It's, that's just the first two lines. I'm going <laughs> straight in on that. Like, yeah, no hook, no hook, no hook. I want you to hear everything I'm saying. For sure. Yeah, Finster. Finster. Yeah, Finster. Yeah, that's that's that. That's what y'all talking down here. Yeah, they they playing the fences out. There. <laughs> <laughs> For sure, they playing the fences out here for sure. Everybody, the whole world on the fences. Y'all got a fences. <laughs> what does that have. mean? I'm it's just to go up here. Okay, is that it? Is that it? No, no, because it means different. It different means places. different in different places. A fence out here is like, all right, if you somebody, you might <laughs> you might want to pass your opinion without getting judged and some way. Or just say it on your fence, bro. With the people, it's like a close friends, but a, a Instagram close friend. You okay, that? okay, like, that's exactly what it is. You might want to post something. In. You know what I'm saying? Female, yeah, why yeah. might want to go post half naked on that joint? Nobody ain't gonna judge her, go ahead and do it in your own defense. <laughs> okay. It ain't your real name, so you can always say it ain't you. You know what I'm saying? Oh, on my body, 4 a.m. was featured on there with you. Yeah, shout out to 4 a.m. So, so like, like what, what made you guys get together and do that one? Uh, I just like his sound. I, I, I love his sound and what he got going on in his story, bro. He, he, he endured a lot of pain like me, bro, and to be able to just make beautiful music with a beautiful sound like that, bro, I, I, I love it. Like, so I reached out to him the moment I heard the right song, and I was like, man, this is one of the ones. Like, he nice. Yeah, we need to make, and our chemistry was just that, man. For him, probably got to take right now. Wow. Yeah, for sure. And that's that's the only person I can say right now. I'm looking forward to like dropping the tape with and see your people reaction, cause it's it's chemistry. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's real. Give me t top three artists of all time, dead or alive, any genre. Uh, I gotta say Wayne. Mm-hmm. Um, Number why? two. Why Wayne? Cause he just how he came. The nigga bad. Ain't like, he was the voice for us. Yeah. Like, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I gotta say Wayne. Okay. Um, Post Malone. Okay. okay. Post Malone in Dallas. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Boy, yeah. You like Post Malone like that? Yeah, I'm a big old fan of Post Malone. That's all, I'm man. That's all. That's a first for us, right? Yeah. Number three, um, gotta be me. Gotta be, man. Gotta come be on, me. man. Coming. Yeah, for he sure. coming. He coming. He said he coming. Yeah, Ain't no yeah, stopping it. Show screen record this for receipts. Like the world gonna know what's going on. Surely. Why D the illness yeah. is in the building on Boss sure. Talk 101 is not a game. Nah, it's not Got a game. It. Man, yeah. thank you so much for coming on the show, man. I hope we did you justice because can't nobody do it like Boss Talk nah. 101. Nah. This shit different. For sure. It, it feel different, don't it? For sure, yeah. It makes sure. you get little chill bumps and shit uh, if you don't watch yourself. Yeah, sure. with the vibe, this shit bro. serious, yeah, man. What's going on, man? What's I told y'all, you just got to get on here to feel it. Yeah. The nigga got goosebumps and his tattoos and shit. Nah. This shit different. Yeah. You know what I'm saying, man? Yeah, yeah what's going on, man? Y'all come sit down and hide my people. Uh, did we leave talk. anything out? Uh, that you want to talk about real quick? Uh, really, for people that just don't see it right then and there, they, they got somewhere they won't be in life, bro. You, you might not see it right then and there, but keep going. Man. Keep going, because when you down, there's only one way up. You know what I'm saying? There's only one way to go, and that's up. But don't forget when you up, there's only one way to go, and that's down. You know what I'm saying? So One more and thing. And tell the audience where they can find you at. Yeah. Um, so why I did the LS1 on everything. Wherever you're trying to find me at, you know what I'm saying? I'm on all streaming platforms. 
I'm from New Orleans, Louisiana, man. Y'all tap in with me, bro. Well, you know, it's been some lies told. We got to stay that before you get off here. I knew you didn't think it was going to happen, but I ain't put you in none of the... I could ask you about Puffy. I could ask you about anything, Drake and Kendrick Lamar. I could ask you a lot of stuff, man. Yeah, 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 but it's yeah. the lie that y'all told you and Buff both been coming to Dallas and you didn't nah. come see Boss Talk, nigga. Nah. I remember that. Yeah, I don't yeah, forget yeah, nothing. Sure. I'm like an elephant, <laughs> nigga. I don't even never think. Listen, I'm an old nigga, but I still remember a few things. Yeah, yeah. Now, you tell me you coming up there, right? I kept it on. When? I kept it on. I kept it on. But I know for sure when I do land out there, you're going to be the one. Boss Talk home, home, man. Yeah, that shit's sure, serious, sure, man. man. From Texas to Louisiana, man. Stop playing. We in the South, my nigga. I told y'all niggas. I told y'all niggas like Boosie daughter said, nigga, it's going down, man. It's going down. Boss Talk 101, what a boss is talk. And yeah. we out.